I am Josh Kaplan, aka otherwise known as with the alias of DJ Capsize. We're going to be talking about vinyl today, vinyl records, um, and the Wax Museum. Records have kind of a, a rebellious aesthetic to them these days. Well, I collect records because I like them. And because, you know, for sampling, that's basically the way I know, the way I learn. I collect records just because it's one of those hobbies I picked up. I just loved listening to hip hop and started going to the store and digging. And then now it's like crates in the house full of records. And I know I have probably about 2,000 records. I probably have about a thousand records. And how do you organize them? Oh, I'm just alphabetical from A to Z. It's basically my last move. I just kind of put all my records in these bins because I had them in boxes before and I had them, you know, they just kept getting screwed up. So I've got these little plastic bins from Target. They're like five bucks a piece. And I kept having to buy more and more and more. For myself, it's by genre and also alphabetical. Got jazz, got hip hop, got rock, got soul, all lined up. So whatever I'm looking for, it's easy to find. I had records when I was a little, little kid. I had Disneyland records and those little fold out box phonographs. Um, and I first heard scratching in the very early 80s. I said, what in the world is that? So I had no idea how it was done, but I knew it was coming from a turntable. And so I used to grab the needle itself and scratch it across the record. I learned later that that's not technically the way to do it, but it gives the way. When did you start buying records? Started buying records like in 95 or 94. I got a record player at a thrift store or something and then just started like, oh, let me go see what this is. I'll hit up Amoeba and go nuts. So I just kind of started going from there. First started collecting records for hip hop records because that's what they were. I didn't have tape or CDs or anything. Set records, so just to play them, really. How much do you generally spend on records? Now? Now, now and then. Well, back in the day, I'd spend drop 50, 60, 70 dollars, like no problem, just go in there and go nuts. Seems like every last bit of extra income goes right back into this store. Yeah. So you're paying yourself to work here? Basically. <laughs> you know, I used to go out and buy, like, you know, the five, six, eight dollar, ten dollar records, because I thought that, you know, they'd be better than the dollar records, but I've learned over the years that. You know, you look for the bargain, so I look for dollar records mostly. Now it's like I'll stick to like 20 bucks and buy dollar records versus like buying 10, 15 dollar records. I think the majority of the vinyl spending is people looking for bargains. And you get so, such value for your dollar when you're buying vinyl as far as great deals for a dollar and dollar ninety nine. Because I think most of our product is priced to move. How do you take care of your records? I don't. Really? I mean, I don't even own one of those felt brushes, so I don't know. I wipe them on my pants if they're dirty. A year ago, I had my records in boxes, and then a big flood happened, and it warped probably half of my collection. So that was a bad day for me. The good ones, like, you know, they're in, like, plastic sleeves and stuff, and, you know, I don't mess with them too much. If I like a record, and I hear it, I'll put a little sleeve on it. This will indicate to me that I like that record. Another good practice is if you have a dog, you definitely want to keep your valuable records away from the corners. What do you think the future is of vinyl? I don't think it's, I mean, it's not going to die because there's still those people who just fiend for it, you know, I mean, it's kind of like you could dig forever. There's not much of a future for vinyl. You have to just kind of be a diehard and really want to do it, really want to have it. It's a tribute to hip-hop itself, to music.
music itself and the classic forms of how music was first brought to the world besides radio. You know, before there was TV, before there was DVDs, before there was satellite, people were sitting around listening to records. You know, I have two young kids and, you know, having them know about vinyl to me is very important. And I think that's the other great thing about the store is the generation from generation parents coming in with their kids and, and buying vinyl and the kids being aware of it. I think, you know, we want vinyl to go on forever. Forever, forever, forever. My mind goes blank when I go into a record store. So I usually just, if I have the time, you know, it's a new, a new store that I've never been to, I'll usually just try to touch every single record. I think people still collect records because I think there's a certain, uh, romanticism to buying vinyl. I think that'll go on forever. Um, and I think that people that love music, there's something special about a record. It's the cover, it's the artwork, it's the spinning of it. And I think um, that's special. And I think, again, to come to a store like this where there's so many amazing things at such great prices, I think that just reinforces the greatness of vinyl.